Hi, this is Chris Hayden here, and I'm going to be walking you through the TOGAF um, Enterprise Architecture Framework. Uh, we'll start with um, the architecture vision, which is uh, really kind of part of or closely tied to the preliminary planning where the enterprise is going to lay out its essential mission, vision, goals, directives, um, uh, define who the key stakeholders are and the leadership and, and governance board and and also the tools that are available um, that's gonna gonna be a, a key element that's going to go into the architecture vision uh, perhaps of all the other elements of the planning phases the architectural vision is is perhaps the most impactful the most um, the most um, you know most important because it's really going to guide all of these other elements um, in the architecture framework development. So, for example, um, it's going to establish, you know, goals in terms of um, how the organization intends to grow. Is it going to involve training of personnel, or, or how is it going to involve that? Are they going to be broadening their market access, changing structurally? Um, or modifying and altering standards of operations, um, standard yeah standards of operations. Uh, definitely, it's going to require a, a strategy diagram map. Um, in terms of my own organization or the school that I work for right now, and that I'm a part of the leadership team for, uh, basically we we would we we do actually do this each year in the beginning of the year and towards the end of the year. It's not established kind of, you know, we, we don't call it our enterprise architecture framework, but definitely we would have our, um, our you know, reestablish our goals for the, for the coming year, um, consider kind of, you know, priorities um, in terms of training and things like that and review policies. Um, in my current organization, rather than sitting down and do this at one time, I would say we definitely kind of continually do this um, for a variety of different sub sub projects um, and that that's perhaps uh, perhaps a reason why we're, we're not as, as successful as we could be um, so I think like for my current organization this does exist but it's not in a single document um, it's in a variety of different meetings and things like that um, separated and kind of scattered all about all about um, so moving on, uh, we should note right that uh, that uh, B, C, and D, uh, and E, and F. These are all really all about planning and, and A as well. Um, and it's not until we get to G and H, sorry, that should be G and H over there, um, that we actually get into the implementation of the plan. So these first one, two, three, four, five, six phases are all about developing a plan and thinking things through. So the, the next phase, uh, B, for business architecture, right, this phase begins with um, establishing kind of the baseline from a business side, uh, the business side of things. And for, for a school, uh, that would be, you know, considering kind of, uh, you know, how, how the customer or, or the students and the parents are feeling uh, financially, where is the, where is the business at, um, what kind of uh, what kind of uh, capabilities do we have in terms of personnel? Um, the goal here is to get get this baseline to uh, use to plot a course towards the envisioned business architecture or the goal the the to be um, uh, vision that we would like um, for the information systems architecture. The next phase. So this is where we're going to look at key technologies that are needed by the enterprise. And these could be, and I think it's really useful to have um, a diagram uh, of these different elements. So we have key end user applications. Um, in, in, my, in my context, in my school, this would be things like, you know, the manage back system that we use in SAP for reporting, um, I guess even email and, and, uh, and WhatsApp and the different methods that we're using to communicate with stakeholders. Uh, core infrastructure and associated applications. So at my school, this would be things like Power School that we use for attendance. Uh, sorry, we've currently migrated to to um, SAP. 
um, but definitely things with security and data management, um, how we're going to manage the grades and, and the records, and if, you know, if there's a problem with a student's grade or they contest it or something like that, um, all that information needs to be accessible. Hierarchical organization is key here, uh, so that um, yeah, this, this information reference architecture allows allows anyone, well, anybody who, who has you know the, the permission or, or who, who should be to find the data with ease. Um, usually a diagram is involved, um, and this ensures that there's forethought, and uh, also that uh, future changes can uh, be facilitated. So, so if the organization gets bigger, or if you know it merges with another organization, or adds adds other elements, um, it's really important that that there's forethought in the construction of this architecture, so that um, yeah, users uh, not just now but in the future can work with this. This idea of kind of, I think it's an engineering idea, right, of having modular building blocks that can be taken apart, kind of like Legos, um, is really important. So technology architecture, this is similar to, uh, in certain ways, information systems architecture. But this really looks at um, kind of like the business architecture phase. Uh, it looks at um, kind of where we are or where the enterprise is in terms of, of technology and where it needs to go or where it would like to go. Um, this framework is really useful because uh, with diagrams you can compare uh, not just proposed changes but I guess even different enterprises and you could do some kinds of analyses and see um, you know how, how one org enterprise differs from another um, and again it would be um, with respect to end-user applications like um, you know, communication platforms between students and, and teachers or, or teachers and students at my school. Um, data management um, it would record, you know, students' grades and performance that we would put on reports and that administrators and teachers would have access to at later periods of time. Um, and also, yeah, security systems. So uh, in my school, we've actually had uh, students, or at least one that we know of, who's tried to uh, use like an IP stressor um, the student was was expelled, and uh, yeah, and, and it, yeah, they're, they're, according to our IT team as well, there's uh, I think we have weekly kind of like attacks um, by they don't know who, but by people who try to try to slow down the internet and slow down the processes of the school. So um, yeah, so the technology architecture is uh, kind of again setting up or describing the baseline so that we have a starting point. Uh, from which to plot a map to our envisioned or desired uh, future technology architecture. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, in terms of uh, the next phase, so opportunities and solutions, this is where we would put all of these different things together, or especially uh, B through D, sorry they're mislabeled here, uh, B through D kind of look at them holistically and begin to be able to make uh, kind of like higher level decisions in terms of risk management, yeah, gap analysis, um, you know, you might map the business architecture and compare that with the technology architecture and realize, wait a minute, there's an element um, of uh, of the school's business architecture that that, that needs, um, you know, a corresponding application or something like that. Um, yeah, this is really where the architecture that's been envisioned and described and planned uh, can be put together in an institutional level. Um, in correspondence with the, the vision and the mission and the goals. Um, in, in my organization, um, the school that I work at currently, I would say the, the biggest thing that we're working towards here is um, our new student uh, or, or application, so students who want to come to the school. So, so the school, we've used SAP as a way to manage uh, reporting and attendance, but we're currently working on um, a, a way to use SAP to manage applications for new students. Um, and so the problem that was identified was that new students who were applying, there was a big lag time between them, you know, applying, taking the, the test that they needed to take to um, the, the entrance test, and then the different heads of apartment, heads of department like math and English reviewing their applications, getting to the principal, and then getting feedback to the, to the general manager 
Um, and so they recognized that SAP could actually do this, and so they linked up these two, and now they're working on um, on an SAP solution that kind of streams, streamlines the whole process. And then also, rather than using paper <laughs> paper folder uh, paper folders, we have it all online, and you can go back and see if a student. I mean, we we had we had cases in the past where we think that a student applied in the past, but um, because of change in the in the marketing department, no one really knew. And so, yeah, the, this uh, opportunities and solutions kind of takes into consideration these different areas in line with the architecture vision um, and helps big, big decisions be made. So uh, migration planning has to do with uh, prioritizing the changes in the projects that were envisioned. Um, yeah, we, I mean, I, I listed the steps here. So, uh, right, you're going to prioritize projects, see if you've got the resources available, um, estimate, you know, costs and benefits for, for maybe different different ways of rolling out or phasing in the changes. Uh, definitely complete a risk assessment and then create a, you know, a visual roadmap and document the whole pro process. Um, in my current school, I can say that we've definitely have experience with this. Uh, when we Im implemented SAP, uh, there was a, there was a, um, an error, a calculation error in the reports um, that went uncaught and we didn't have really uh, a migration plan, a formal migration plan. Yeah, it's it's kind of different. It's a small, you know, small small institution, small school. Um, so it's not like we were dealing with you know hundreds or even dozens of people. Uh, but definitely, this risk management I think was something that was not addressed, and that ended up with mistakes in the reports that were printed, and they had to be recalled. So. Uh, the last two phases, which again, sorry, the, the, the letters are not correct here. They don't match in the diagram. Um, implementation governments, governance. So this is really about, um, these, two, these two are really about implementing all of this planning that's gone on up until that point. And so this involves, um, you know, get it, making sure that, uh, you know, you have PICs and that roles and responsibilities are delegated, monitoring the progress, um, within the kind of larger framework um, and planning to, to get the, the changes um, in effect. Um, in, in my current school, we have, well, wait, I, I keep talking about SAP implementation, but because that was just something that happened last year, um, we, uh, we have, you know, we, we identify different uh, uh, people in charge for different grade levels. We identified and gave responsibilities to those same people um, in terms of checking and making sure that the the uh, comparing the the previous and the new system were were in place and were adequate. Um, the progress, yeah. So we met we met uh, we met every month or so to discuss the progress and make sure that things were were moving smoothly. In most cases, they were behind, um, which caused the project to uh, be I think about four months four months postponed. Um, and that kind of gets to this final element, which is architecture change management. Um, and yeah, from, from my experience at my school um, and, and working with our, man, our migration of uh, PowerSchool to SAP and designing our own SAP system uh, for data management and attendance and things like that and st uh, student life cycle uh, management, uh, there were many, many changes that we encountered and we had kind of no idea, or I guess it's not we didn't have no we didn't have any idea, but we really had no plan for dealing with these changes. So, um, or at least if we did have a plan, they were kind of you know <laughs> uh, as the, as the issue arose, we came up with a plan. Um, so yeah, so I think it's important to note that this architecture change management is not kind of like a, oh crap, you know this has happened. This is like a normal and really important part of the enterprise architecture because change happens all the time the the you know the only the only constant is change um, so yeah in, in the readings and things they noted that um, you know there could be new technologies arising there could be new innovations in business or new developments um, actually the strategic plan itself could change and all of those things we need to have formalized methods and uh, processes that everyone agrees on for for dealing with those change changes so that was uh, uh, a bit about TOGAF. I think it's a really useful model uh, for managing um, enterprise change and, and uh, 
ensuring that the right levels of thought are present um, and that uh, the organization is running smoothly in accordance with the, the vision that is outlined in the architecture vision. Thank you.